So welcome back to the channel. Uh, the last time we were getting our information from our server that we've been querying, uh, you can look at the previous video that's up in uh, the link. And someone made a comment and asked, is there a way to store this information in a JSON file? And actually, yes, there is. By default, uh, using PHP, you can be able to store this information. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to extend this a little further and actually make an error log file or save the information depending on what uh, the response code is from my querying of the API. So we have a WP Remote Retrieve response which actually accepts our response coming back from our query which is a WP Remote Get function. We're going to check if we're getting, the code is usually 200 that shows that the, you're actually getting back the proper response from any server. Even if it was a, our local server, the 200 code is actually what you get. So let me just actually show you that when I just do a small query here. If you go to inspect and go to the network tab, you'll see that you have a status of 200 because everything is loading. Um, from your CSS, from your JavaScript, everything is logging on the back end. That's why you're able to get all these 200. Now for the 304, those codes are for modified information that's coming back. So what we're going to do in our code is we're going to look for the code which is 200 and that is for our WP Remote Retrieve Response code. If that is working well, then what we're going to do is we're going to actually var dump this information and throw it on the front end. Let me just try this here. Let's reload. And we actually see that we get the response back in our browser on reload. And so that means our code here is actually working. So what we want to do is that if there is any error, we also want to uh, get what is wrong. We want to actually get something wrong and then we are going to append uh, our error message. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mess this up in just say mess.com meaning that we're not going to get a proper uh, feedback from the server because that's wrong and we actually see that we have an internal error. Now I would want to log all this information inside a file that is called a uh, We'll just a file link is going to equal and we're going to use wp plugin underscore url as a, we're going to use this global of wordpress and we're going to pass in and say we want it to come to our plugin called query apis and then we're going to look for error dot error log dot uh, txt that's what we want to look for and if uh, the code is actually right, instead of var dumping it, what we're going to do is actually we're also going to find that and then we're going to find our file called data.json and we're going to dump it inside uh, what's going to happen. So what I'm going to do now is actually write a new function, just clean this up here, and I'm going to call it function write to underscore file, that's our function, and it's going to expect uh, some data or what we we'll call a message that we are passing, and we can also uh, pass a file link inside it just to allow us to get everything working well. Now we're going to use functions from PHP, straight up from PHP. So we have what is called a F open and we have F close which closes and then we have F write which actually is basically file write or file open or file close. And you can actually find from uh, the PHP manual that there are very many other modes of writing that you do have. For example, we have the reading only, we have reading and writing, we have the write we have those that are, are just allowing us to append lines of code at the end of our file. So we're going to use the A version and we're going to use the W version. 
so why do we do that? Because we're going to look for if the file exists, then we just append the content. But if our file does not exist, then we're going to attempt to create it. So how do we do this? Uh, we're just going to, first of all, come and say, we're going to have an if statement, and then else we'll do the other. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go for the file. If the file exists, what file exists? If the file link exists, then we don't have to do anything. What we're going to do is we're going to use fopen. So we're going to pass in the file link and then we're going to say just append our message at the end of the file. So what we're doing here is we're going to save this and say this is filing. The action is filing, so we're going to open that file and we're just going to write content at the end. Now how do we do that? We're going to use the fwrite function. Now the fwrite function takes into parameter uh, a number of parameters, so it's going to take in our filing uh, variable, it's then going to take in our message that we're going to pass straight into this file, and then the next thing that we need to do on our message, we're going to actually pass in some space, so we do the slash and n, and we are done. So if the file exists, let's get a uh, filing, pass in the message to write to our file. But if that is not true, then we're going to do the same process. However, we are going to change from just a penning at the end, but we're going to attempt to write this file if it doesn't exist. Then the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to use the fclose function to say that after writing and doing everything that we want to do, all we need to do is just close that file link, which is our file that we pass on in through here. So what I'm going to do now is actually uh, make some changes to my error log. I'm going to say my error message is actually equal to the date because I want to pass the date information to it, so we'll add some strings, some quotations here, and say so we want to get the day, we want to get the month, we want to get the year, and then with the space we want to get the hour, the minute, and the second, then we'll append some space, and after appending space we're going to get our previous error message, and just pass it in. So that is our error message, and what we're going to do now is we're going to call that write to file function, and we're going to pass in our message, which should actually be the error of our response, so we're going to pass in the error message, and we need to pass in the file link, which is file link at this point. So these, these could be anything, it's just a variable we've stored. Now we also need to get this and say if everything comes back well, then we're just going to file, to, we're going to write to the file, and our message at this particular point, uh, so we can just say message is going to be, instead of var dumping this, we're going to pass this as a variable, then we're going to store all our response, or our JSON, and then I'll comment these two lines out. So we get back our response, write it to the file, it checks for whether this file is available, write it to that. If that is not the case, so if the response is not that, we just pass in the response in here, filter it out to the get error message, pass in the message as that, and save. So the first thing that I'm going to do is you realize that our URL is wrong, so I'm going to reload. And when I reload, we have an error here because we're using HTTP to write to our file. So that is something that WordPress does not allow us to do. So what we're going to do is come back here, 
Oh, so I made an error here. We shouldn't be using uh, the plugin URL. So I'm just going to change this and call it uh, WPIR, which is a uh, which is the plugin directory. Come back here <coughs> and reload. C line seventy one F close is asking for. So the error is not closing the file link, but rather we need to use file link here because we're opening filing and then we're closing that. So if I come back here and reload, we're going to have this going through. It's clean. We'll see that our data.json is actually logged because uh, our URL is correct and we have our information. However, if we mess this up, and then save and come back to reload this and come back to we have a new error-log.txt and what it's doing is that it's getting the time uh, the day and then giving us the error of what's happening so we have an internal error server alert we actually see that that is an issue anytime we have the code response coming out well everything works out if we have a response error here then it's log if it is not any other response once if it's not 200 or is a WP error then that would be the best way of handling this and yet relating it to what's happening here so thank you for watching this video if you liked it give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you've not so that and turn on that notification so that you don't miss any new videos that do come out this challenge came from someone who wrote in the comments and it has helped me improve my code a little bit better and I think if you leave a comment we should be able to look at it. So thank you for watching and happy coding!